Hello and welcome to The Real Hernando, a podcast created to highlight Hernando, Mississippi's amazing local community and small businesses. I am your host, Derek, and this episode is brought to you by Shelby Road Productions. Today, I'm talking with Heather McArthur and Jamie Clyatt from the Wesley Meadows Retirement Community. Wesley Meadows is located in Hernando, Mississippi. They have independent living apartments as well as assisted living apartments. Their mission is to serve older adults in the spirit of Christian love. Now, first, we're going to be talking with Heather. Heather, you are the Area Sales and Marketing Director, correct? Correct. And uh, part of today's episode is we're going to try to introduce you to the community through this podcast. Okay. And learn more about your story, your background, and what your plan is to help Wesley Meadows, you know, move into the future. Okay. And then we're also joined by Jamie Clyatt. I'm saying that right. That's correct. And you are the executive director of Wesley Meadows, and you're going to help give us a deeper knowledge of what Mesley, Wesley Meadows offers and what it's about, and um, and then how you and Heather are going to start working together, and the this, this story behind how Heather came to you in a dream. Yes. All right. We're going to yes. be talking about that and how this whole thing came to be. Um, so thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. All Happy right. to be here. All right. So... We're going to start with you, Heather. Okay. So um, let's learn more about your backstory and uh, a little bit about where you're from. Okay. And, um, and then kind of what your career path was that eventually led you to Wesley Meadows. So, okay. So where are you from? So I live in Senatobia, Mississippi, and I have been married for 27 years. And we share four beautiful children together. Our story is a little different. Um, we both were, became teen parents at a young age and, uh, left us, uh, being high school dropout. So later in life, we obtained our GED and, uh, decided to go to school, mm-hmm. um, got my degree in social work and spent the last eight years working in mental health. And so that has kind of brought me here. Mm-hmm to this point where it's a little different. Um, So on the front end, I should have mentioned that you're new. Like part of this, again, as I ran through in the intro, but now that we're actually having a conversation here, you were brought in as the new sales marketing director Mm -hmm. uh, to take the place of your position, right, Jamie? That's correct. And you just are just now getting going, right? Right. Um, So this was brought to me from Jamie about doing this as a way to highlight you and introduced to this community and Hernando as a whole, who the nails, who the new sales marketing director is. Um, and I'm interested in to, I know we get the story on how you ended up in here, but let's talk about your past in the mental health field, because that's okay. definitely going to tie into mm-hmm. what you guys are trying to do and what you're going to be adding to Wesley Meadows. But let's right. talk a little bit about your history and that. So I spent the last eight years working for a re- region for mental health um, for a program called PAC, P-A-C-T, Program Assertive Community Treatment. And we provided service to adults who suffer from a severe mental illness. Mm-hmm. Um, so there we um, actually saw the individuals in the community Um, helped them with housing, food resources, um, medication management, um, just an all around treatment Mm -hmm. service for them in the community of DeSoto County. So did you go to school for this? Yes, so my degree's in social work. um, And I knew um, once I graduated, I knew I either wanted to work with older adults and and or work with mental health. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where it's just leaded me so far. And you went to Ole Miss, correct? I did. I graduated from the University of Mississippi um, 2015. Awesome. So, what yeah. was that experience like? Um, it was very difficult because I was raising four children at the time. That's so, right. That's right. Um, you know, and you started just, young, correct? Well, I want to say I was... Well, that was 2015, so I was probably in my 30s. No, like as 30s. far as your children. Oh, yeah. My children were very young. Um, mm-hmm. I want to say 13, they, you know, my oldest two are probably in their teens and my younger one, my, our baby was probably eight, seven, eight. So just kind of a. That's a nice span. Yeah. That's a mm-hmm. vast span of emotions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
and adolescence. <laughs> yes. Uh, while yes. also going to college yeah. full time. Yeah. That's and so, right. um, I mean, it was, you know, I stayed up a lot of late nights sure studying and yeah. um, I would take them to school and I'd come home and study and I also had a small cleaning business on the side. So let's talk about how this came to be. All right. <laughs> And now we're going to turn it to you, Jamie. There was a story about you having some kind of dream. Yeah. That tied all this together. So let's hear more about that. Well, when when I knew um, that I, our current exec, our executive director at the time was retiring, and I actually obtained the promotion, um, I spent nine years here, and and this campus, this um, the people here in this campus has been my passion for nine years. So it was crucially important for me to be able to have to find somebody that had the same heart and the same drive for our older adults here. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's on my, on my mind a lot. So um, I actually had a dream about Heather. Um, and it's funny because Heather and I met seven years ago, eight years ago. Probably a little bit less than that. Um, but she had moved a current client in then, and we kind of met, and we became friends on Facebook, but we never really talked. We hadn't seen each other in years. Um, and out of the blue one night, I had a dream about Heather that she was interviewing for the job. And I woke up and it was like three o'clock in the morning and I have, I run some crazy hours too. And I'm like, Oh, you know, just kept on and on in my mind. I'm like, God, do you really want me to message her? Like, it was just so strange. Um, and so I messaged Heather and at three in the morning. Well, yes. I did. Yes, she did. I did. <laughs> but I'm thinking she's not going to read it at three in the morning. Apparently she I runs the like same hours. Six. Yeah. But um, I said, please don't think I'm crazy. And please just ignore me if you're not interested. But I had a dream about you. And I know this is really weird um, and kind of told her what was going on. And, you know, it was so it's so funny how God works. You know, yeah. God really can just place the right people in your lives at the right time. Um and I think your comment was, I don't think you're crazy. Um, she had been thinking about her. She was a recent empty nester and wanted to challenge herself a little more and work more with older adults. And so it was so, it was just, it was amazing how that connection came about. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew then, you know, she was like, well, look, I don't do anything with sales. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I've never done sales. And I'm like, it's just, it's just about the heart. You know, I just mm -hmm. need somebody because, you know, you can teach anybody anything, but if you don't have a passion for what you're doing, I can't teach that. Mm -hmm. um, and just her background in, in mental health, it's funny, the more I've talked to her and gotten to know her over these last couple of months, God is so good. I mean, that's going to be so beneficial to our community here and us starting to serve more people with dementia, Alzheimer's, and mm -hmm. mental health issues. And you know, he just he just always knows best. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a great, great connection. I remember in our pre-interview, that was a big, big part of this mm -hmm. and, and filling that gap mm -hmm. in Wesley Meadows, mm -hmm. having that service where now you're focusing more on the mental health. Yeah. Um, before we get to that, let's let's explain to the listeners a little more what Wesley Meadows is, aside from the little snippet I did in the intro, okay. what exactly does it offer and, and who does it offer to? Okay. So we've been in this community 26 years. This is our 26th year. And we offer, um, it's a senior community that offers independent assisted living and also assisted living with the emphasis of memory support. And our folks have the benefit of being here and having a, a family home atmosphere and having the freedom to go out and about and do what they want while still having someone just outside their apartment door here. Mm -hmm. So we offer apartments, individual apartments, one, two bedroom and studio apartments. But our newest service that we're offered, offering is our uh, Maddox house home that we're just about a year and a half in a building. Um, so many community supporters in Hernando donated to that and helped build that. And it is where we, we have 10 older adults with, um, it's assisted living, but it has a focus of memory support. And most of our folks, that they have a diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's. So mm -hmm. for years, we've offered just independent and assisted living. But the way the bo baby boomers are coming up and dementia and Alzheimer's being more prevalent is, is exactly the direction that we're wanting to head to here, is being able to offer social services and someone who has an experience mm -hmm. in that background yeah. um, and be able to help with that. So. so what's the plan as far as how to fill that gap? Is there anything in the works as far as um, like groups or anything? Well, I think our, I mean, our big goal for 2023 mm -hmm. 
is to create maybe, and it's still kind of in the early stages of planning, but we're hoping to have um, at least two to, what, five meetings throughout 2023 of where it either be a support group for caregivers or do like maybe a mental health forum mm -hmm. um, just to open it up to not only our residents here but also the community um, because I think that's something that we're lacking in DeSoto County is for people to be able to have a place where they can come and um, you know talk about things that are um, bothering them or um, that they're seeing the changes in their loved ones or um, just having that connection mm -hmm. so you know you say the baby baby boomers mm -hmm. you know I think what comes with that too is a little more rigid mm -hmm. you know uh, way to express their feelings mm -hmm. you know and that stigma towards depression and anxiety so yeah. they might not know how to come forward with some of this stuff even though they need the help so that's awesome that you guys are going to bring in that. Do you think, do you think it'll be a little tough to get people to open up, or, or because of because of the sort of the age demographic they're in? Well, and I think you know so much maybe just if we have a speaker and you know maybe if that speaker can provide some sort of knowledge or resources that they didn't know that existed in the community, um, or just know that they have a place to come to to seek help or to mm -hmm. seek advice, whether it be for them or their loved one. Um, because we know, you know, older adults are often isolated or, um, you know, experiencing depression or dementia and, mm -hmm. and either whether it be them or their loved ones don't know how, you know, may not know what that looks like or understand it mm -hmm. because of the stigma, you know. Yeah. Um, like yesterday, I think we were talking about it's the unknown that frightens us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. um, you know, and just being educated if, if, if it's nothing else, but just to come there to learn more about resources or mm -hmm. learn about the signs and the symptoms of mental health. You know, uh, there's a place, a thing called Al-Anon, mm -hmm. which is, you know, basically Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous for the parents mm -hmm. or the loved ones that need help and and need to express their feelings on how to cope with their loved one that's going mm -hmm. through the problem. Yeah. So I think that's just as important as yeah. then also given the actual patient treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, like you mentioned, the word dementia comes up a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure that's a very common thing in a retirement community. What kind of treatment is there for that? If so, we're, you know, we, we're offering some help to the loved ones as a way for them to you know, open up and, and get some help on how to cope with their loved one going through that. But do you handle any treatment for the dementia and for the actual patient? Well, in assisted living here, um, our nurses dispense medication and we have, we are going to be um, doing more rigorous care plan meetings with families um, to help educate with that. Um, of course, there's tons of research and a lot of, a lot of uh, progress has been made towards um, helping treat or, you know, eventually cure dementia or Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with our staff here, when we move an assisted living resident in, our director of nursing is on, in those meetings on the front end, evaluating medications and, and behaviors and seeing if something's been missed or something could be added. Um, you know, so that's part of the partnership that we offer here at Wesley Meadows. So, mm -hmm. you know, for nine years I've preached, just let me be a resource for you. Even if you don't move in here, people need to have a place to come to um, because caregiving is hard work. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, if, if you don't have that, if so many people un misunderstand that oh, we have to go to a nursing home mom now because we have dementia or Alzheimer's and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people, we can pr still provide a home atmosphere with the independence that they that they really do seek um, with the support there. So um, we we have a um, I guess a, a partnership with our nursing department and our director of nursing on on helping educate and kind of walk their hands through that process and throughout the duration of their life. Mm. So and I can see why you got, became attached to that mm -hmm. when you when you moved up. Yeah. into the executive director role, you still wanted to make sure this was going to be taken care of. Right. Which is where Heather comes in, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I know the timeline has kind of been jumbled up here, but I wanted to get as much information out there for mm -hmm. the for, for the audience as well as how this works. Um, where can they go? I want to get back to Heather's story. Yeah. 
But where can they go real quick to get more information? They can go to um, our website, our corporate website. This is our uh, 60th celebration year wow. um, that we've been uh, in partnership with them. And in there, we, we have 12 locations across the state of Mississippi. And they can look up the Hernando location and pull up that. They can also just call here and ask for Heather or me. If Heather's mm-hmm. not here, it's 662-429-2070. Awesome. Yep. Good deal. And we'll, we'll uh, repeat all of that yeah. at the end, too. So let's talk about you getting this midnight text or <laughs> Facebook message, <laughs> you know, and what was your first thought on taking something like this You can this be on? honest. Here. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, yeah, well, yeah. I, honestly, I had to double read it because it was so weird for me because I had said over and over, I, you know, had been in this job working for the PAC team for eight years. And I had said over and over, you know, God, you know, and had prayed about it that, you know, once my daughter graduated from high school that, you know, maybe I would reach out and do something a little different because social work is so broad. Um, So when she messaged me, I had to double read it and was like, is this for real? I mean, is this already the timing? Yeah, the timing. because the timing was Anna had just graduated the week before. So I was like, God has got plans. <laughs> it <laughs> took so, him a week? I, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> a whole and week. So I, I was like, you know what? What do I, I mean, I, I immediately texted back, I think, and was like, oh, Jamie, I don't I have zero sales and marketing experience. My background is in social work, I, you know, but. I'll be happy to come in and interview. I need the interview experience because obviously I didn't have a lot of that. Um, And so that's just kind of where we went from there. I came in and interviewed and was like, I kept just telling myself, you know, what do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. Especially when you have someone championing you like this. She sent you a message at three in the morning. I think you got the job at that point. (laughs) Well, I, I knew, I mean, I knew it was, you know, I mean, I had social work background, but then I was a little more worried about the sales and marketing because, you know, I don't know what that, I didn't know what that looked like. And I, Mm -hmm. you know, still am learning. I've only been into like a month into this and, um, but it's been great. It's been, you know, and I know it will be a huge learning experience to add to my social work background. Um, But yeah, I, I went in with just an open mind and ended up on a second interview and here I am. Awesome. So, so clearly, you, and you mentioned this earlier, it's the social work background that you really loved and, and looked at in the mental health aspect. Mm-hmm. And, and you must have been like, we well, can teach the sales and marketing side. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. it was the heart, you know, because I still remembered years previous working with Heather and seeing her working with a, 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 a client and how much she loved them and the extra mile that she went. Um, you can teach anybody anything textbook, but you can't teach the heart. Right. We're a nonprofit, and this has to be a service heart-led decision. Um, and I knew that, you know, if she took that leap, I could teach you anything. I've done sales and marketing my whole life, it feels like. So I'm like, ah, I got that. I can't teach you heart. So, and she had that, so. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. something you just can't teach. Like That's right. That's exactly so you look right. at the, you look at the the natural gift of someone mm-hmm. and you can build around that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so how's, how has the first month been for you? <laughs> um, it, it's been a whirlwind, I'll be honest, but I, I feel like sitting here today, I've handled things pretty well. Um, mm-hmm. There's been things that's been thrown at me, obviously like this podcast, this, this podcast yes. <laughs> um, that is um, a little overwhelming for me, but I'm here and I'm doing it. So I have to give myself a pat on the back for that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think fear is one of the biggest things that we all have that lies within us, you know, but we have to kind of step over that. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll never know or never have growth if we don't do that. So me and Jamie met several months ago. Mm. And she already had this plan for you before you even got hired. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I reminded her of that. I mean, at the time, we were talking about uh, wanting to do this Mm -hmm. to introduce said new sales marketing director. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it took a while for you to get hired. But I think if you've been here a month, that means two weeks in, we were sitting in your office doing a pre-interview. So, Mm -hmm. like, 
right out of the gate, you're like, oh, I guess I'm on this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't have a choice. I've really pushed her, pushed her boundaries a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's great because she's, she's been a great support system to me too. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, it's, you know, I, but she's done so good with it. You know, she's, she doubts herself a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But the times that I've seen her struggle, I've seen more strength than struggle. Um, and she's done a great job. So. And this seems like a very relationship based, mm-hmm. you know, opportunity, which you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. Have you been building relationships with the Oh yeah, the residents? which is 100% what social work is about. Yeah. And, um, and I've been able to venture out a couple of times and, and help some of our um, residents here with whether it be mental health or just, um, hey, I have some things that have come up in my family, like um, needing a new POA or things like that. And so, you know, I think that I'll be a good asset in that situation to be able to, um, you know, help guide them into the community. And I've, you know, helped set up appointments and, you know, so I'll continue hopefully Mm -hmm. to have time for that, um, which is kind of the social work slash case management, um, that, at least you fit into that comfortable. Yeah. That must yeah. make the day a little easier oh, for yeah, you because you have that aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it kind of makes me feel like I'm still doing a little bit of what I did before. Mm-hmm. Um, so when things get overwhelming here, I can just kind of step away and, yeah. um, and you know. Come hang out in this room. By the way, I should yeah. mention that we're recording in someone's apartment. Yeah. That I have a, taken many a tours in. Yes. That, that uh, is letting us use a room. And I thought it would be cool so people can see what it looks like in here. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the resident's daughter flew through this door and almost knocked this camera down while we were getting ready. <laughs> you never she, know. She was like, oh, okay, you're doing the podcast, oh, aren't hello. you? Hello. Yeah. yeah so, and, and it's really nice. It's, yeah. it's really mm-hmm. quaint and cozy. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was talk when we met about outreach mm-hmm. to the community. Um, has that something? Is that something you've already been doing or is that the next phase where you really want to focus on more outreach? And in either way, what does that outreach look like? Well, I mean, we've always done outreach here. Of course, COVID put a damper on everything, it seems like, for years. Well, really years, but uh, yeah. a long time. Um, and so we had a um, caregiver support group here that we had just kind of built up right before COVID started. And again, that was kind of my part of the passion was bringing the community in. Don't be scared of this. Let us help you. Let us mm-hmm. hold your hand through this. Um, but there's a lot of growth potential here. There's talk of um, offering physical therapy for our residents here. Um, and so really, you know, the outreach is a huge piece of who we are. We have to, you know, we want to be a part of this community and we have been for so long. We've been very blessed with the support here in Hernando. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just be, raising enough money to build a greenhouse that took, you know, close to $2 million. Um, and wow. what an amazing thing to say that the people of Hernando helped build that. And it was opened up completely debt free. Um, and how, that, how long was that process? Um, about four years, I believe, three to four years. Um, it was a long, a long haul, but um, it's it's been amazing. And it finished during COVID. It was the only project across the state that was finished with our company, um, and that's just strictly due to the hard work and dedication that Hernando has had for Wesley Meadows for many, many years. The majority of our um, family members come from referrals within the community and doctor's offices and people that have had family here throughout the years. Mm-hmm. So and mm-hmm. you know, we definitely want to keep that outreach part going. And we definitely consider, as we record this, post-COVID. So now... Post-COVID, So yes. volunteers are welcome again. Yes. It's open doors mm-hmm. yep. straight up again, right? Absolutely, yes. And that's what we want. So. Okay. So how do they get involved? Go back to the website? or um, They can go to the website or call here. We have um, an amazing activities director. I know everybody's seen our bus around all over town in DeSoto <laughs> County. We're busy, busy. Um, mm-hmm. But she has a great activity calendar going and a great pool of volunteers. But certainly you could call the front office and ask for the activities director mm-hmm. if you wanted to get involved. Well, uh, we can wrap this up here in a minute, um, but I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. And what final thing would you like to say? Because I'm hopefully some residents will be watching or listening yeah. to this, even though we met someone in, in the in the hallway that was like, a podcast? What's that? <laughs> so we're going to educate them, that yeah. too. But, yeah. as, you know, as a way for you to sort of have a, a microphone to the residents, what would you like to talk about? Is there anything you'd like to say to them? 
they definitely come first here, you know, at Wesley Meadows. And so my place here is to be there for them mm-hmm. and to know that, that I am here and I am a resource to them um, for whatever, if it's mental health or if it's any daily changes in their life, um, I'm here to help. I'm not just a sales and marketing director. Yeah, that so, title can sound very Yeah, very cold. And, and yeah. Cold. But so. we absolutely want everyone to know that there's his heart here. Yeah. For mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Yeah. I hope uh, we've helped educate other people in this community on what Wesley Meadows is all about. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's one more time, you know, push people to the right locations to get more information. So what was that website again? Um, it's www.mss.org. Um, and it's under Hernando, um, so they can reach out there. And then, of course, you can always just call our main office. We'll be happy to help any way we can. And you're located up on uh, uh, Bahalia and Mackinville. Bahalia and Mackinville, yeah, yep, right, right beside the Presbyterian Church. All right. Well, uh, now let's challenge our audience, shall we? Mm-hmm. This, is the, this is what I always try to do because what's the most important part about all this is how people share this. For this message to get out there the best it can, our audience, as you watch and listen to this, share, 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 please. That's right. Uh, that helps Wesley Meadows. It helps Jamie. It helps Heather. Mm-hmm. And it helps the Real Hernando podcast, which helps me. See, That's right. It's a win-win for everybody. Win-win. So here's how you do that. Uh, first, you can go to our website, therealhernando.com. Uh, you scroll down the homepage. You'll find this episode in there. You'll see a thumbnail with Heather's picture on it. You click on it. And now you can watch it, listen to it, or even read it. It's going to be transcribed as well. We'll grab that URL URL link, email it to a friend, email it to a family member that might be interested in this place, uniquely to this episode. Uh, Throw it on your Facebook. Share it away. We also post uh, video clips of our episodes, so you will find them on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I don't think many residents here know what TikTok is. but We've done TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're on those platforms, come follow us, and then you'll see our posts and then share those posts. Comment, like, heart, uh, anything you could do is greatly appreciated and goes a long way, more than you probably ever realized. You can uh, find our episodes also on all the major platforms, Spotify, Apple, Audible, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google, um, and our Instagram and Facebook is at the Real Hernando, along with TikTok. If you want to go there directly, go to at the Real Hernando for all three of those social platforms. Uh, and that's it. So thanks again, Jamie, Heather. Yep, I appreciate you, you doing thank this. You. I hope this helps. Yes. And it's been a pleasure working with you all. Thank yep. you. Thank you.